Okay, so what I thought I would show you today is how to hem stitch the end of your project. This is a really nice way to finish your project if you are wanting to leave like a raw fringe or if you're wanting to twist or braid your fringe as well. It just leaves a really nice neat edge on the end of your weaving. So um, I've got some of my weft yarn. So I've just finished off my weaving project. Then I've left some yarn that I've taken out of my pern and cut. So I like to leave about four or five times the width of my project. Um, some people like to leave a lot less. But I am a worry what and I would rather <laughs> not run out in the middle of hem stitching. So I've got a large tapestry needle. It doesn't need to be sharp. Um, on the edge here, what I like to do is make sure that my weft yarn comes out not at the very end or not like leaving. See if my weft came out like this and didn't catch that edge that's going to be left out when you're hem stitching so what I would do is I would unweave those last two threads and pull them in a bit further so that when we do start hem stitching we'll catch those edge pieces so I've also taken the tension off a little bit so you can see it's quite spongy um, if I, I find if I have the tension too tight then I can't really pull those weft threads in into a nice little group so it doesn't really look as neat so important to remember how many ends you do on one side compared to the other side. You don't want to have like 10 on one side, five on the other, you know, you just have a wonky fringe. So starting off, I've got my um, needle and my thread. I've got my warp yarn and I'm doing little bunches of six. So two, four, six. I find it nice having an even number. I usually have an even number through my heddles. Um, sorry, through the reed, um, and that just sort of helps me to bunch them up nicely. So I've taken my six threads, my needle going from the top down and through to the left. Now it's nice to keep a little bit of tension on that. I'm going to take my needle and from the top, I'm going to catch the probably one, two weft threads down and then back up. And keeping tension on that, we're going to pull it tight. And then we've got our first little bundle from our hem stitching. So holding this off to the left, I'm then going to count out one, two, two, four, six. And I'm going down and up through the gap, catching our six warp threads. And I'm going to pull that tight, nice and tight. And holding that tight, I'm going from the top to the bottom of the last of the two weft threads and pulling that tight. There we go, we have another one. So you just keep going like that. I like to, you can sort of move your last bundle out of the way. Two, four, six. Tapestry needle goes down, catches that those six threads like that. And we're pulling. A nice neat little bundle. Keep that tension on there. See, I'm holding with my left hand while my right hand catches those last two weft threads and up. See, it's almost like a little knot and it just creates a really neat finish. And you can see then I've got little pre-made bundles for when I want to do my fringe. So I like to hold, it's easier on projects that are a bit more narrow. Um, so I go two, four, six. I love hem stitching. It's like one of my favorite things to do. I just find it really um, relaxing. Once you get the hang of it, it's just like one of my favorite because you don't need to think too much about it. You can just kind of zone out while you do it. So two and up, pulling nice and tight. So it gets a little trickier as you get further along. See, I like doing the edges because I can hold um, these bundles and the, the cloth here with my left hand. But as you get further along, you know, it gets a bit harder to hold. So what you can do is you can put your fingers in through your bundles. So I'll do that now. I like to go through like the, the last two, still holding my thread, and we're going two, four, six, in and through, like that, pulling it tight, keeping the tension there. See how closely I'm holding that next to our bundle, um, catching two weft threads and up. Now you can alternate this too, so you could do two weft threads, three weft threads, so that just keeps it from giving you like a really stark sort of line where those two weft threads are. So for the next one, so we'll go two, four, six, catching those six ends, 
keeping it tight, holding the tension, and I'm going to go one, two, three on this side, catching that lift, and a nice tight little bundle. And as you can see, when I let go, we don't lose the tension on these bundles that we've already made. So it's important to hold the tension as you're doing it in itself. So let's keep going. The only thing you need to be careful of when you are using quite a long um, <laughs> piece of weft thread is that it can tangle and you might get knots which makes it hard to pull through um, as you're hem stitching. So making sure just to pull that thread out, keep it nice and neat um, will help to prevent that. And this becomes one of those things. When I used to hem stitch, <laughs> every single time I felt like I had to look it up, figure out how to do it all over again, and then it just becomes one of those things that's just second nature, and you barely even have to think about it as you're doing it. So I always hem stitch from the left across to the right. I'm not sure if it would work the other way, say if you were left-handed. I would love if anybody was left-handed um, would be able to clarify that I guess but I can imagine if you like to use your left hand as your dominant hand I figure you could start from the right and work your way across to the left that makes sense now when you're beginning your project um, and hem stitching the start of your project you still would start on the left side and the best thing that I like to do is weave a little bit that just, you know, if you've literally just tied on your project and you haven't done any sampling, um, either do a little bit of sampling or weave a little bit just to spread that warp out. Otherwise, you'll still have all of your bundles from when you tied your warp on and it just makes it a lot harder and it's the tension will be different at the start versus the end of your project when you're hem stitching um, because the warp will be so different. And I can show you how to do that as well when I start the next scarf. And we're about halfway now. And as you can see, as I'm moving across, I'm just moving my fingers in through the warp. That's another reason why it's good to not have too much tension on there because you can kind of fit your fingers in through the warp, then move your threads out of the way. sure how many ends to put in your little bundles the first thing that I would think about is what you want your fringe to look like so do you want a very thick chunky fringe to go with a thick woolly scarf then I would do bigger bundles um, if you've got quite a fine sort of delicate project like this then that's why I'm doing such small bundles because I want the fringe to really match um, the cloth so we've got a silk scarf here I don't want big chunky fringe so I'm doing quite small bundles um, and another good thing that you can do is take your amount of warp threads and divide them so you want an even amount of bundles. For example, if you are doing, you've got 200 warp ends, you want to do um, 
10 threads per bum bundle that gives you 20 bundles so then you'll know that you won't end up with an odd amount when you get to the end um, because I like to I've ended up with an odd amount on either end of my um, scarf only because I, when I slay my project through the reed I always sort of jam the ends a little bit to give a nice dense um, edge of the cloth so once you've gotten to the end you can see that thread kind of just sticks out to the side once we've done our last um, bundle so what you can do if your um, weft thread is a matching color as your warp like mine is you can then just include it in that last piece of fringe it's going to blend in and then you're not going to have anything sticking out here but there have been times when I've had say for example I had a white warp but my weft was colorful it would be really obvious if I put it into the end of the bundle like that um, so what I would do then is I would just cut it off the loom or you could do it on the loom and I would weave it back into the cloth so that it totally blends in so um, if you want to make this a little bit more secure you can just take it and thread it back through those weft ends and into the middle of that bundle just like that oh, and my weft's gotten a bit tangled there there we go just like that nice and neat then we cut it off and you would barely even know and look at that it's just such a pretty way to end your cloth so I'll show you what to do now so make sure you keep this long enough that um, when you do your fringe it's not going to be too short so now that we have hem stitched the end of our first project what do we do if we still have um, warp left over and we want to hem stitch the second project so what I like to do is um, you're going to wind this warp forward and I'm gonna have to think about how much fringe I actually want but let's let's say we want five inches of fringe for each project. So we're going to wind it forward. We want 10 inches of fringe all together because don't forget we're going to have um, half of the fringe from the first project, half of the fringe from the second project. So we'll wind it forward just a bit more. And the way that I'm measuring this is I'm taking my measuring tape and I'm placing it underneath back at the cloth where the cloth finished and winding it up. So we've got 10 here. So that looks pretty good to me might just put a little bit of tension on a little bit more there we go thank you so we take our shuttle with our weft yarn in it and what we're going to do is we're just going to start weaving okay now making sure that when you put those first few weft picks in that you aren't beating them down all the way because obviously you don't have a fell line right now all right so we'll put them just about there, right in the middle. Because remember, when we start doing those next sort of few, it will push it down a little bit further. I know this sort of starting weaving is never the prettiest, is it? <laughs> when you just start a new project. Working our way up a little bit as we start to build up a little bit of cloth, it starts to get a bit prettier, a bit more stable. The tension sort of evens out a little bit as well. It just starts to look a bit nicer. So we're weaving a little bit so that we have something to start our hem stitching on. Because it won't work if you don't have anything there. As you can maybe see those first few picks that we did really not that attractive so my little secret tip not so secret tip my little tip when it comes to hem stitching is to undo those sort of um, so you're starting from the left so probably the first two or four um, weft picks just they're just really not that pretty so just using my tapestry needle I'm just literally pulling them out Just like that. Now as you can see I'm holding because I don't want to make the pick above it um, 
pull too far away from that cloth line. This will also give you a bit more of that weft that you need to do your... So that is probably perfect for me to do my hem stitching. Now, um, it's exactly the same concept as working from the other side, like at the end of your project. So you're taking your tapestry needle, threading your weft yarn through it, pulling it through. Now, this is what I talked about um, in the when I was hem stitching the end of the project. Do you see how if I pull it off to the right, we're not even catching those two left end um, warp threads. So take your needle and just catch them like that. The pattern's not gonna matter. You won't see it because it will be hem stitched. I like to sometimes just make sure that that weft yarn is fully um, smushed all the way up. <laughs> um, and I might take the tension off just a smidge so that I can get those neat little bundles all pulled together. Okay. So taking my warp thread, and I'm doing these little bundles the same, six ends per bundle. So our yarn is on the left, so we have two, four, we'll do seven, and that will give us the same amount on the left side. So we've got our warp threads, we're taking our needle down, pulling it up to the left, and instead of catching the weft ends below, we're just going down from the top. Just like that. So it's just reversed. Now it looks a little bit messier from this side. The first sort of couple are always a bit awkward. So then I'm holding that off to the left while I grab my next bundles. So two, four, six. Catching those six ends, pulling up at an angle and making sure that you hold that weft nice and tight to grab our little bundle. And then we're going, see we're going one, two, two or three, poking that down and then back up, just like that. See, and that catches our nice little bundle, just like that. Holding that off to the left, it's a bit, I find it a bit awkward on this to start with, just because my yarn is sort of in the way, I guess like, um, because we're working down here, not up here. So, we're grabbing our two, four, six. Okay, if I, take my needle on top of that weft thread, it's not going to completely catch. I'll show you what it will look like. Okay, so um, this weft thread is on top of our knot there. Whereas, so that means it's going to not look as nice as the weft thread that goes around the whole bundle. So I'll show you what it should look like. So grabbing our six, two, four, six, and instead of taking our needle on top, we're going below, pulling that tight, and that's going to catch. See then our, our bundle is on top, and it gets pulled up and through, and it just looks so much neater. It looks so much neater. So holding that off to the left, two, four, six, I will do two in a row, one showing the wrong way, and then I'll show you a close-up of what it looks like. So wrong, this is wrong, or wrong to me. You might do it this way, but I just find that it doesn't quite catch those um, two, four, six. It doesn't quite catch the bundle nicely, so that's wrong. This is right, goes um, under, catching all of those threads beautifully and neatly. And I'll show you a little close-up of what those two look like side by side. So I'm going to go back and undo those two um, that I just did because we don't want to leave that one um, the way that it was. Just using my tapestry needle to undo those little bundles. And it's easy, it's so easy to go back, you know, it's not completely ruined if you do it wrong and it takes practice and feel, it just takes time to get the feel for um, having it right. So I like to try and like lean my yarn off to the side, two, four, six, 
And remember, we're going under that weft yarn. That creates our pretty little bundle that doesn't look like it's going to fall apart. So I hold that off to the side, off to the left. Two, four, six, and remember, under. stitching and like I said if you're wanting to um, if you've got a similar color um, you can add that into the fringe um, if you are using a contrasting color I would then weave it back in through um, along with one of your weft picks um, and because I want this to blend nicely in with my fringe I'm just taking my thread and angling it back down so that it lies neatly with the rest of that fringe and I'm going to cut it off around about the same spot where the other one was a little bit overlapped that way I can neaten it up when it's off the loom and ready to fringe now what you would do is you would just wind your project forward and continue weaving and you've got a beautiful hem stitched end um, to fringe or to leave natural after you finish weaving now one other tip that I will recommend as you wind this project forward and begin weaving your second project when this section of fringe gets to the cloth beam um, keep an eye on it because as you weave you know you have a, that little bit of draw in you don't have any draw in here so this section of fringe will likely be wider than the cloth you've already woven and that will mean that these sort of end threads of your fringe may fall off the edge of your cloth, which might give you some tension problems further down the track. So with um, when this gets to the cloth, as it's right about to wind onto the cloth beam, I would make sure that the tension is nice and loose and just gently pick them up um, and pop them back onto that cloth just like that so that when it winds on, you're not going to have any issues of this falling off and being really messy um, and having tension problems down the track. But I hope that this was helpful for you. Um, if you have any questions, pop them below and I'll do my best to answer them. Um, don't forget to subscribe for more dyeing and weaving tips and I'll see you next time. Thank you.